I often get asked the question, are HBCUs still relevant? And I think that is a ridiculous question. That's an asinine question. The question is, how could you take so little and do so much? How could you take so little and produce some of the greatest graduates our country has ever known? We were not allowed to attend the majority institutions. We had to come to our own institutions, the historical black college and universities. But to be successful as a university requires funding. And this is what's been withheld from TSU. You cannot talk about fairness and equality if you do not provide the equal amount of funding that you're required by federal law. It speaks louder than any words about equality and justice. This has been happening for decades and decades and decades. It is an example of institutional racism. The states were supposed to give these schools money, and quite frankly, they, they didn't. How many more students could these institutions have graduated if they had received their proper funding? How many more research opportunities would have been made at Tennessee State? How many more lives would have been changed if Tennessee State did not have this huge arrearage amount owed to them by the state of Tennessee. We don't want to continue to promise to do what was in law and continue to just say no. That was done too many times to Tennessee State. My name is Janet Lauren, and I write about the finances of higher ed here at Bloomberg. I decided to look into about 20 public schools in the South when I heard about how they have not been funded for decades and decades from their states. An important job at Bloomberg is following the money, and it was clear in this case there wasn't as much money to follow. HBCUs are very important historically. They launched the careers of luminaries such as Martin Luther King Jr., Thurgood Marshall, Toni Morrison, Vice President Kamala Harris, and Oprah Winfrey. Because I didn't go to Stanford. I went to uh, Tennessee State University. We have a lot of first-generation college students. They come to Tennessee State University. They go to other HBCUs because they want to break their cycle of poverty. Education is the first step to breaking that cycle, to live in a new economic base. That's what we're seeking, and that's why HBCUs have become so important. During the Civil War, in 1862, the United States, under the leadership of President Abraham Lincoln, created the land-grant system of universities. And that essentially created a type of university that was public. Previously, people in the United States only went to college if they were extremely rich, think of Harvard, Yale, and Princeton, or they were going to become a minister. The government decided to help create public universities where students could learn about agriculture, military, farming. After the Civil War, during Reconstruction, states in the South did not want to educate former slaves and black students. So the United States government came up with a second moral act in 1890, and they said if there's going to be discrimination in admissions, that there should be a second land-grant university. So this gave students the opportunity to be educated at another place if the University of Georgia or the University of Florida or the University of Tennessee didn't want to educate black students. There's the federal funds that had to be matched by the state. Then there's the state funding that's provided to land-grant institutions. And in both of those areas, we'll fall short. TSU got the short end of the stick. I get calls regularly from other HBCUs that are land-grant, and the same matching funds are owed to them. There are new developments in the death of George Floyd, the unarmed black man in Minneapolis who died in police custody. Post the death of George Floyd, these issues are being discussed in the Tennessee State Legislature. Several legislative committee were held over several months to discuss what Tennessee State University didn't get. 
And I think that is a turning point. And that hasn't happened in other southern states before. Some legislators say they didn't know about it. Good afternoon. I would like to call the Joint Land Grant Institution Funding Study Committee to order. Harold Love is a state legislator in Tennessee. He went to Tennessee State. His parents met at Tennessee State. His grandmother went to Tennessee State. She became a teacher. His wife went to Tennessee State. Last year, we were the legislature charged with discovering if there were funding inequities for the two land grants we have here in Tennessee. And I, along with Senator Richard Briggs, were charged as the chairs of this committee. And so our task is to investigate to see if Tennessee State University may have been underfunded by the state of Tennessee. This is gonna be a deep dive into land grants and the benefits, how we're funded. And I really hope that out of this, we, we come up with some idea of, of, of going forward, how um, we can be a model for other states. We looked into the situation and discovered that indeed Tennessee State was being underfunded at that moment by at least $1 million per year. And that's a state requirement that is supposed to match federal funds for the land grant funding. What we found was the primarily white institutions always received their funding and the predominantly black HBCU institutions did not receive their funding. When you have funding mechanisms in place that creates a difference in between them, that is discrimination. We began with a study of about uh, 2000 to 2016, those years, discovered that there was $37 million that was not funded to TSU at that time, but this still was not the major piece. I knew that there was more there than just this $37 million, but we did not have the data. I needed to first go and look in the budget books to find out if the state had put anything in the budget books for Tennessee State. So I go up to the State Archives library that we have in the building, and I start with 1957. Open the book to see where Tennessee State's deficiency is. I want to see how much they have not funded Tennessee State. So I notice that there's no entry. Like literally, Tennessee State is not listed for their land grant funding. So I say, okay, this is one year when there was nothing in the budget. So I said, well, let me look in the next year and see if there's, maybe this was just one year when it wasn't there. I look in the next year, there's no money there. I skip ahead and say, well, maybe that was just that decade, but come back to 1950s. But I go to 1960s, there's no money there. So I decided to spend the whole day there looking through all the budget books from the 1957 period to 2007. And in each instance, what I discovered was there was not an entry in the budget books for Tennessee State. And unfortunately, my worst fears were confirmed by the House Budget Office. They too did their research and discovered that Tennessee State was not allocated their funding in those decades. There's not even the word land grant in the budget book. My father served in the legislature from 1968 to 1994. And upon winning my election, I went to my parents' house and was going through my father's office, just trying to find some things that I may be able to take into my office. I discovered this book called The Special Financial Needs of Negro Universities. You know, at that time, didn't look into and read because I'm gathering documents. I'm trying to figure out how I can make the point a bit more salient for my colleagues downtown. It's not getting much traction. And then I get this sense of this voice saying to me, read the report. So I read the report. In this report, it details how Tennessee State had been underfunded and how they had appointed a legislative committee in 1970 to investigate this. But nothing was done. Not one recommendation was followed that the committee made. But something's wrong if Harold Love Sr. was making these recommendations. And in 2021, Harold Love Jr. is having to make those same ones. Something's wrong. It disturbs me that 50 years later, I'm making the same argument. That document became, I think, the catalyst for getting uh, Tennessee State their state match funding that year. 
but also became the catalyst for us having documentation for this new committee that we were starting. The unfortunate reality is the state did not value Tennessee State as much as the University of Tennessee at Knoxville. And some may view that as a harsh statement that I'm making, but I'm looking at the data. Thank you for the opportunity to present to you today. So during the hearings, some budget analysts looked through the books and came up with a couple of calculations from $150 million to $544 million that could be owed to Tennessee State. So the question is, what happens next? North Nashville, as we mentioned, a hard hit area by Monday night's tornadoes. You walk around the campus of Tennessee State and you see the facilities. Some were destroyed by a tornado in March of 2020. And the agriculture dean tells me they likely will not be rebuilt for at least two years after that. So you get the sense of what potentially could have been if a school had more money. And as we pan across here to the more agriculture center, these are the greenhouses here at TSU. You can see all the panels on top that would cover those just flew off. The greenhouses and a bunch of other facilities, they were completely now bulldozed out. These were beautiful greenhouses where we were doing a lot of uh, uh, outstanding research work. And now you got a bunch of rubble here. We lost uh, several facilities in our research station, uh, the Nashville Research Station. It's a, it's a big disappointment. You can see if you talk to any of our faculty, you'll get more frustration than I can express really. And then if a university is taking two years to build something that we lost in a tornado, that doesn't generate uh, much confidence either. When you look at the poultry house on TSU's campus, you see a building that was destroyed by the tornado, but one that is still left, but is in bad condition because that building was built in 1970. If you bring a, a faculty member here and say, we want you to do research here, they see this equipment, there's no way they're gonna agree to come here and, and, and be a faculty member to do research on, with, with equipment this old. No, you're, you're driving them away. This is just an example though. We got, we got uh, all of our buildings are so dated. We can't attract them. The high schools have better facilities these wow. days. Yeah. So you create this environment where you have deferred maintenance on buildings, you have lower scholarship offerings for students, you have lower salaries for teachers, and you most certainly have lower endowment levels for your university. It is now our responsibility as stewards of state government to ensure that this state institution is properly funded. TSU has gotten more money from the state in recent years. They've been able to get better resources and they've been able to get more competitive grants. But the question is, what could these schools have looked like if historically they had gotten a lot more money? The arrearage amount that the state of Tennessee owes to Tennessee State represents generations of African Americans that could have been educated. It represents countless opportunities for the community to be enhanced because of TSU's presence in Nashville. When he mentions the word arrearage, and, and that's looking back. We've, we've already been over that. We have to look at what we're going to be, what we're going to do going forward, not trying to remedy completely something in the past. We can't, you know, look backwards and go forwards. We, we don't need to be trying to operate looking in the rearview mirror. I hear uh, some of our members saying that we can't look back. I do think that we have to take in consideration um, some of the things that have happened in the past in order for us to build uh, on the future. To this year's HBCU graduates and to all your loved ones who've helped you reach this day, congratulations. The Biden administration has earmarked and given money to HBCUs in a way that we really haven't ever seen before. The administration has made HBCUs a priority. And while in some cases that doesn't make up for decades and decades in the past, it is a new page going forward. It's not just a dollar figure because it goes beyond that. It affects the lives of the community. A grave injustice took place. 
But right now, we want them to make the correction because it's never too late to do what's right.